Hey everyone, welcome to my channel Note Developer, the ultimate destination for all your programming needs. In today's video, we are kicking off an exciting new playlist focusing on building a WhatsApp clone app. But hold on, this isn't just any ordinary clone. We are going to dive deep into the world of clean architecture and explore some powerful programming languages and technologies like coroutines, retrofit, firebase and room database. Get ready to witness the magic of these tools as we create a stunning WhatsApp clone together. Now, if you followed my previous tutorial on the WhatsApp clone app, you might have noticed that it wasn't up to par. It lacked the proper architecture, some of the latest developments in the Android community, but fear not, because this time around, we are raising the bar. For this new playlist, I have gathered all the essential ingredients and the latest trends from the Android community to deliver a flawless top notch app and that's why this time we will build the clone app with a solid foundation based on clean architecture principles we will harness the power of kotlin coroutines for asynchronous programming retrofit for seamless network requests held for dependency injection room database for local storage and of course we won't forget the magic of firebase authentication and real time functionality and by combining all of these we will construct an elegant and functional app not only will you gain a solid understanding of these concepts but you will also in acquire invaluable skills that can be applied to various other app development projects especially those centered around social media that's right so the formula we will be using can be adopted to create any type of social media app that involves chat functionality and building a network of friends so with that knowledge you gain from this seri series the possibilities are endless feel free to let your creativity soar and develop your very own social media app before we jump into the tutorial i want to ask you for a small favor please show your support by smashing that like button and subscribing to our channel don't forget to bookmark this playlist as well because we will be consistently uploading new videos packed with valuable content now let's address any concerns you might have along the way if you encounter any issues or errors during the project don't fret simply take a screenshot of the error message head over to my instagram page and send me a direct message i'll do my best to respond promptly and help you resolve the problem your success is my priority so don't hesitate to reach out all right with that out of the way let's dive right into the tutorial our first step is to integrate firebase into our project it's a breeze so don't worry follow this simplest first click on the tools option in the menu select firebase from the drop down menu the firebase assistant will appear offering various options like analytics real time database cloud firestore for our project, we will choose Cloud Firestore, Fire, click on it. This will take you to the Firebase page. Create a new project. Now navigate to your project directory and locate the app folder. Send file inside the folder. Congratulations, your app is now connected to Firebase. But wait, there's one more step. We need to provide the necessary dependencies for our project. To do this, open your Gradle module app file, build.gradle. In the description box below, you will find all the required Firebase and authentication dependencies. Simply copy and paste them into your build.gradle file, easy peasy. Now that we have set up our Firebase, let's talk about the core of our project, clean architecture. To follow this architectural pattern, we will organize our code into three packages, data, domain and presentation. In the data layer, we will handle all things related to, to data manipulation. This includes fetching data from various sources and passing it on to domain layer for further processing. Once the data is refined, we will deliver it to the presentation layer where it will be utilized by activities, fragments to update the user interface. To make our lives easier, we will also create a util package which will uh, house essential classes basically which will have house essential classes like response or resource type these classes will assist us in handling different states of api calls such as loading success and error phew that was a lot to cover but trust me we are just getting started strap in and get ready for an exhilarating journey of learning and creating stay tuned for the upcoming videos in this playlist where we will unveil the secrets of building a chart dropping whatsapp clone remember if you have any questions or face any challenges i am here for you don't hesitate to reach out now let's embark on this thrilling together tutorial together are you ready to revolutionize your coding skills let's go now while this clean architecture thing may seem simple let's focus on the main activity layout first and what we want to show to the user initially basically so in the main activity layout we will need to create a text input layout to achieve this let's create a simple linear layout inside this layout set the orientation to vertical and add a top margin of for 20 dp basically 
then the width and the height of the linear layout should be set to match parent and wrap content respectively within this linear layout create a text input layout with the id text input layout set its width and height to match parent and wrap content respectively as same as the linear layout inside the text input layout include a text input edit text with the id phone number edit text and apply the desired properties next create another linear layout with the same structure as before but this time it's for the user's name give it a unique id and provide the user with a way to enter their name now we have two linear layouts one for the user's number and another for their name these layouts will serve as the foundation for our user authentication process to enhance the visual appeal we will add an image view on top of both layouts once we design the layouts we will combine them into a single linear layout with the id user authentication layout now now let's shift our focus to the main activity in order to simplify view management we will enable view winding to do this open the build.gradle file of your app module inside the android block create a new block called view winding and set the enabled attribute to true by enabling view binding, we will have an easier time accessing and manipulating views in our code. With view binding enabled, we can proceed to set up the view binding in our main activity. Start by creating a variable called binding of type activity main binding. To initialize the binding, assign it the value of activity main binding dot inflate. This line of code will inflate the layout and provide us with a reference to the root view. Finally, call set content view binding dot root to set the main activities content view to the root view provided by the binding. By completing these steps, we have successfully set up our view binding. At this point, all the views in our layout are set to gone, meaning they won't be visible initially. To make certain visible based on the user's authentication status, we need to modify their visibility dynamically. To begin, we will check the authentication status first to determine whether the user is authenticated or not. If the user is authenticated, then we will execute the as if block and if not, then we will execute the else block. So in the else block, let's add the code, we will set the visibility of several layout items including the app logo the proceed button the user authentication layout the elements of that layout the user number layout the uh, user uh, name layout so this will ensure that these components are displayed when the user is not yet authenticated now we will create a seamless flow starting from the repository moving to the use case and finally constructing the v model first we will establish the repository package in within the data package inside this repository package we will implement a class which is authentication repository implementation that aligns with the repository defined in the domain package within the domain package we find three crucial packages models repository and use cases we will create these three packages accordingly additionally we will create a util package which will prove useful in the future let's start by creating the resource class to handle api responses effectively the resource class designed as a sealed class facilitates coordination with the api responses it enables us to display leading indica loading indicators while fetching results. The entire API handling process revolves around this resource sealed class. Now, what does this resource class require? It simply needs a sealed class resource with the type parameter t representing the expected data. We will begin by creating a data class for success which holds the data of type t. This class will return a resource of type t. The next step to is to create the error class which contains a nullable message or type field then again this class will return a resource of type t lastly for the loading state we will create an object called loading that returns a resource of type nothing it's as simple as that now let's discuss how to use this resource to start we need to define an interface called auth repository responsible for communicating with the repository class within this interface we will define four functions first we will have the phone number sign in function which takes as a phone number a string and an activity which is main activity or any other relevant activity or any relevant interface basically it returns a flow of resource especially a resource of type boolean we can import this interface into our class moving on the use user authent authentication function requires no parameters and returns a boolean indicating whether the user is authenticated or not next we have the get user id function which returns the user's id as a string it doesn't require any parameters lastly the sign in with phone auth credential function takes a phone auth credential and returns a flow of resource with a type of boolean this function should be marked as a suspend 
let's now implement the repository methods inside the data dot repository package we will create a class called auth repository implementation injecting the firebase auth dependency into its constructor within the auth repository implementation class we will implement the auth repository interface fulfilling all the defined members for the is user authenticated function we will check if firebase auth dot current user is not null returning true if authenticated and false if not to implement the sign in with the phone auth credential function as a suspend function we will use firebase auth dot sign in with auth credential with callbacks for success and failure listeners to ensure the callbacks work seamlessly we will use a suspend cancelable coroutine block this will allow us to call the continuation dot resume method with either a resource dot success or resource dot error depending on the outcome finally we will use the flow block and include try catch block within the try block we will emit a resource dot loading object to indicate the process has started then we will create a phone auth options object include the necessary details inside this phone number sign in method and uh, also uh, in the catch block we will emit a resource dot error object with the error message if no error occurs we will proceed with the desired functionality additionally we will override the on code send function which returns the verification id combining the verification id with the received otp from the user's phone we will obtain the credential required for signing with the phone authentication to handle this we will launch a coroutine scope sign in using firebase auth dot sign in with credential method and handle verification failures with us within a separate coroutine lastly we will call the activate bottom sheet function within the coroutine scope to display the bottom sheet passing the verification id as a parameter that's it we have successfully crafted a complete flow from the repository now now this flow continues to the use case and then to the view model in the next video when we implement the show bottom sheet class in the function in the main activity where we create the frag bottom sheet fragment in which we, the user will enter the otp and then we will use the verification id and that otp and combine those to get the credential and then you log in with the sign in with the auth credential basically that's our authentication flow will gonna be look like that which we will cover in the next video so i hope this uh, you like this video if you like this video click like button subscribe the channel press the bell icon see you in the next one bye